Hi, my name is Nikos Dimitrakopoulos. I work as an application engineer for Altair, mainly focusing on power electronics topics. Today, I'm going to present to you the flux and piecing coupling and discuss how you can leverage Altair's specialized solver for motor drive simulation, that is no other than PSIM, while working around your own motor design coming from flux at the same time. So, without any further ado, let us get started. First of all, thank you Abdus Ahmed for uh, explaining how we can get the lookup tables coming from Flux, essentially the .mat files uh, that uh, represent a reduced order model of our machine designed in Flux. And now let's discuss how we can build the control around it and deploy it in a system level simulation by using PSIM. This task is no easy fit. And in order to approach these types of simulations, you need a tool that it's, first of all, power electronics focused, dependable, and fast. The difficulty comes from the high frequency switching uh, in the inverter and the fact that the solver needs to be specialized around that. I don't want to get into the details on what happens behind the scenes in the solver, but I just want you to remember that uh, PSIM is specialized for this kind of applications. And uh, let's now see how the tool looks like. So this is a system level motor drive simulation in PSIM. As you can see, we have the power stage in the upper graph with uh, the voltage source, the inverter, and an IPM motor. This is one of PSIM's legacy motor models. Uh, PSIM was acquired by Altair just two years ago, so it has been a standalone tool for close to 30 years, incorporating its own motor models. And of course, uh, it provides the ability to design the control scheme really quickly with dedicated blocks for uh, space vector modulation, for example, DQ transformations, PWM generation, um, digital control, digital PIs, sampling, and all this business. But one of its, uh, let's say, main characteristics is the speed. And let's jump directly into the software to investigate exactly that. So this is PSIM with uh, the legacy motor model inside. Uh, this is an example that everyone can work with by just navigating to design sheet, motor control design sheet, torque control systems, uh, the first one, the simple PMSM IPM drive. As you can see, there is a bunch of parameters I can change here. And when I click parameter file, the control gains are automatically calculated for me. So this can save a lot of time. And now let's run this. So the simulation is completed under two seconds. Uh, let's investigate the torque, the command torque and the actual torque. This is a, a torque control system. We can see that we have reached a steady state with a switching frequency of uh, 20 kilohertz and all the switching effects are captured. Now, since acquisition, PSIM and FLUX are under the same, uh, let's say, vendor umbrella, under the Altair umbrella, and it makes much more sense to be able to design a custom motor geometry into FLUX and be able to pre-solve it and export it as a reduced order FEA-driven motor model uh, for PSIM. So this is, this is exactly what we have done here for the dedicated PMSM flux and flux motor models. Essentially, you can drive, uh, you, can, you can follow the uh, procedure that Abde Samet just showed in order to get the .mat file. And then this .mat file is leveraged in two places inside the PSM simulation. First, it's loaded to the dedicated uh, flux or flux motor model here. And then these uh, lookup tables are used in order to accommodate for the different LD and LQ while the motor, while the rotor rotates, and essentially capturing all the spatial harmonics effects. So uh, this approach captures both saturation, spatial harmonics, cogging torque effects, and also directly gives us the copper losses and core losses by making also distinction between eddy current and hysteresis losses. All that being said, let's now try the same motor drive example, but this time with a flux motor um, dedicated model instead of the PSIM legacy linear one. 
If I double click on this model, we can see that we just have to define the path to the .mat file. This is saved as a variable named filemat. The same .mat file is included in these lookup tables in order to be able to include the rotor angle effect and thus the spatial harmonics. So when I run this, uh, this will take, uh, of course, longer than the ideal case. There's also uh, a parameter that has to do with it is the uh, also the total time of the simulation, which is longer in this case. Uh, but now bringing the results for the torque, since it's, this is a torque commanded system, um, here we are. We can see that the torque hits its reference, but this time it's far from ideal. Uh, I can also print the supply currents to the motor. And let's zoom into them to see uh, the non-idealities included in this simulation. Uh, and also let's run the FFT for the signals in order to see the different effects uh, for different frequencies. So for the current, for example, we can see that we have some high harmonic content around the switching frequency and its multipliers, but also let's say low frequencies uh, that have to do with spatial harmonics. Now coming back to the presentation, I have gathered some interesting results regarding the added value of this integration between flux and PSIM. So uh, we can see the spatial harmonics essentially interacting with everything and uh, of course this can affect the frequency response of the whole system and the control bandwidth. So what do we do about it? Do we try to correct for them? Do we set a different uh, uh, phase margin and control bandwidth in order to have the control attenuate them? So these are all, all interesting decisions and they can only be investigated when an integration like that between your own custom motor and the system level simulation tool happens. Uh, an interesting example would be the comparison between the uh, linear motor uh, simulation versus uh, the Nissan Leaf motor example uh, we have in the design shoots uh, inside PSIM. So we had essentially the same system, the same input parameters and even the same control gains between the two simulations and only change the motor. Uh, and as we can see, uh, with the same control bandwidth, we have the a linear motor model uh, simulation working just fine and then the high f higher fidelity Nissan Leaf motor model coming from flux uh, not converging at all which means that the lower fidelity of the linear motor models can hide some of uh, higher fidelity effects that actually in real hardware in real life would affect the controllability of the system based on the same loop gains. So, uh, at least in my view, the first big advantage of this connection, the added value that this integration offers, uh, is the fact that you can proactively identify and address control issues before uh, actual hardware implementation. Uh, is uh, what we sometimes call integration hell when different engineering teams try to combine what they have uh, in this case, we had a motorcycle example. You can find this example if you search in our Alter community page, uh, electric motorcycle, PCM and flux. Uh, so in this case, we found out that uh, the higher fidelity of the motor can be less forgiving to, let's say, optimistic uh, PI gain controller values. And in fact, uh, let's say, save you some time uh, while calibrating those with real hardware. Another big advantage of this integration is that you can finally break the silos and close the loop, let's say actually deploying your motor in a system level simulation within the tool of the same vendor and uh, investigating the effects of different uh, inverter models, uh, even different switching frequencies uh, to the thermal uh, behavior of the motor and even the NVH analysis. So for example we can see here the supply current uh, for the motor for different switching frequencies in the inverter with uh, a flux motor model added inside PSIM and we can leverage this higher fidelity 
current waveforms that come into PSIM. So when we add the flux motor model and run the whole system simulation, we get these non-ideal currents as a result. And then we can close the loop back into flux, uh, for example, to investigate what is the effect of the uh, what is the, the effect of the uh, PWM to the thermal behavior of the motor. And also, since we have uh, a high fidelity representation of the supply currents, uh, we know that this, uh, the harmonics coming from those currents affect how the motor sounds and essentially the NVH analysis of the motor. So, uh, again, if we push back those non ideal currents back to flux, we can calculate the forces acting on the stator teeth and then utilize more of our tools within the same umbrella in order to do vibration and noise analysis uh, and uh, also in the, a very cost-effective manner with the Alter Units model. Finally, I would like to end this session by suggesting to each one of you to have a try in this combined workflow with PSIM and FLUX uh, to do the whole system level simulation and actually leverage the speed of the PSIM engine. You can directly uh, just uh, start with a pre-built example in PSIM even without much experience when it comes to control uh, with a click of a button uh, in our examples you can get the full operating uh, working area of your motor drive to have your system uh, run to steady state for each working point and investigate things like efficiency or even how they are controlled uh, variables of the system behave like the torque and speed or the d, uh, d axis and q axis current uh, for the motor drive. If you want to learn more on how to do this on your own and investigate different key performance indexes for every working point, feel free to reach out to us after the session and we can guide you through it. That's it. Bye.